Hi, this is Bart Sharp, and this class is um, disconnecting or dissolving from the matrix of fear. And maybe I already explained about what a matrix is. It's a collective consciousness, or more specifically, a collective unconsciousness. In other words, it's happening to us, and for most people, they're unaware of it. Now, a lot of people are aware of it. Like They may feel something funny, as Melanie was saying, um, as we were talking. Well, yesterday really felt kind of weird in my body, and I didn't feel right. Um, and um, that's kind of our signal. And the first thing you really need to address is, is this energy really mine? Did it come from a source? outside of me? Is it in my community? Is it, is it amongst my um, people I live with? And, and you can really get specific and, and you just do it kind of muscle testing or just trust your gut, you know, or whatever answers show up. Do it with curiosity. Uh, not like you're trying to combat your ill feelings. Uh, because when you're trying to combat it, it, you're basically coming from a judgment that this is bad and I got to get rid of it. I got to defeat it. Those are all a, a judgmental perspective. And when you start to judge it, all of a sudden your awareness starts to narrow. It becomes less. As opposed to Hmm, I wonder what this is about. I wonder what it's, you know, message is for me. Um, so that's um, a good thing to, to put out there. Oh yeah, I just wanted to uh, remind everybody to uh, mute your uh, line. And if you do want to talk, unmute and just, uh, because um, that would, you know, um, comments and questions and, and uh, you know, what your issues with fears is always a really good thing to field. Uh, and this one was a really interesting to get prepared for. Because fear is something that, you know, it's a call to action. And most people think about it as in an avoidance, that something is dangerous and we should always step back or away. And we've been taught that through society. You have a fear, it's uncomfortable, or you might want to be aggressive with it. And um, those strategies sometimes works, but when we start to get a blanket about what fear is, all of a sudden when fear starts to show up in our we react in that pattern, which is not a good thing. Uh, it's kind of like if you were in a crowd of 20 people and a guy pulls out a gun and raises it up uh, and shoots it like maybe in the air or something. Um, probably of those 20 people, they would tell you 20 different stories because they probably have so many uh, things in their past about judgments about how gun pe people with gun are dangerous, that they heard those stories about somebody shooting everybody. Uh, and, and so immediately when they see that picture, they're gonna react from their past experiences and see the situation from their own judgments and limitations. If somebody, was just going, well, that's a really interesting point of view that that is there. I wonder what this is about. Uh, or they had no judgments about people with guns. They would see it probably more accurately. And uh, a really good thing to know about fears is how they trigger our defensive systems and, and what our defensive systems are. And our defensive, defensive systems 
are on our masculine side or our right side. And where I always see the core energy of our defensive systems, kind of like the, where the central part of the emotions are held and repressed and act out from is in our liver. It's held in the liver. And generally they work in a trio of emotions, a triangulation, so to speak. And when we are in that state of our defensive system, we generally bounce along these three emotions and we kind of go in a cycle. It might be fear, anger, and sadness, or fear, anger, and shame, or love, fear, and sadness. It can be a lot of things, but generally it's gonna have fear and anger as a big part of that defensive system. It's kind of the emotion that pushes out to take action. And just think, if we are pushing out to take action with fear, what strategies are we uh, doing? Most likely, we are trying to control, dominate a situation, you know, in whatever way we can, so we can create some sense of safety, you know, right, or imagine sense of safety. That's kind of how it works. Uh, and so we, we just go in these unconscious patterns with the defensive system that, you know, uh, for example, uh, I, I, I use my Aunt June a lot, God bless her, uh, because she was one of the most fear-based people I ever met. And she really gave me a lot of misinformation about how, how the world is so scary and how the worst possible outcomes can happen. Uh, God bless her. So um, she would, uh, let's see, one of Aunt June's fears. Oh, if you're along side of the road, you better be careful or somebody is going to stop by the side of the road and rob and kill you. She's seen it a million times. <laughs> so, you know, it, it, it just creates that lie when you hear it. If you start to align and agree with that judgment and say, well, Jan June is right, you fall into that place. If you're in resistance and reaction to it, like that woman's crazy. Well, you're going to still implant it in you. And all the time that you're on the side of the road, that fear is probably going to come up. And it's just like, I don't want to believe this. This is crazy. I'm okay. Uh, but still it's there because you've been resisting or reaction, acting to it. As opposed to just, as, as Buddha would say, you just keep it at an interesting point of view or detach from it and, and just look at the Aunt June and say, well, you just have a lot of fear, honey. And I, I don't have to really believe what you're saying. But of course, I was a kid at the time. So an adult is supposed to be the one with all the information. And you're supposed to believe everything they say. So I believed everything she said. So, um, you know, when we think about this with fear in this day and age, um, there's so many fear-based stories. And if you're on Facebook, you see a variety of stories and they come from totally different references. And, uh, you know, some people love Dr. Fossey and some people think that he's horrible and bad. Uh, it's just one example. Uh, I personally don't know. Uh, but we are trying to sort out through fears to find our own form of safety. So this is, you know, in this day and age, one of the greatest fears that pops up, or there's two of them really, that I see, is fear the unknown and fear of being degraded. You know, that we jump to these conclusions that, wow, 
if they did all of that to us, let's say we're thinking about uh, they genetically modified this disease and sent it out to the world to kill a bunch of people. And I'm not saying that's true or false. I, I don't know. Um, then we start to jump to these uh, judgments that we are being manipulated and degraded. And um, so let's just look at that and do some clearings on that. We're going to take a little journey here. And, and if something shows up along this line of what you see, uh, please uh, share with us. So in relation to this fear of the unknown and what may happen may be very degrading. Now, what's the worst thing about a situation like that? Okay, somebody is talking and uh, I, I just ask that you mute. Uh, I don't know who that is. So, um, so just think about where that source goes to you uh, of, I just got to get my bearings again. Um, in other words, there's stories in your life that you have stepped into the unknown and things have happened to you that you have felt pain. And it may feel degrading, like somebody was very insensitive to you, or maybe they actually wanted to humiliate you or hurt you. Uh, they wanted you to feel some sort of pain, or they just didn't care that you experienced the pain from a situation. And maybe they set it all up for you to experience that. So, that type of stuff would be triggered in this day and age. And for me, I've been working on this. This is like the fear of the unknown and fear of being degraded. And for me, it all went back to uh, junior high, like sixth, seventh and eighth grade. I, I went from this very organized, safe, never saw a fight, never even saw people using curse words in my classrooms. We're talking like, totally like, uh, you know, it's like being, being on Leave it to Beaver or something. You know, it was just totally middle-class America. And then I went to a junior high and it wasn't like that at all. <laughs> People were picking on each other, they were cursing, they were yelling, they were, you know, doing all of this stuff that made it a unsafe environment. So I threw in there, I went in there without being prepared and it was like culture shock for me. And I think sometimes when we go into the teen years, that's one of those times we do create some of our big fears because we are stepping into the first years of adulthood and we start to review and enact our lives again. So everything that's not resolved, that's weakness in us, seems to start, start coming out unconsciously for us to act out. So think about this part in your life that sees these news headlines and there's uncertainty. There's a fear that we're gonna get hurt. And even a fear that somebody purposely wants to hurt other people and we're part of that group that could possibly be hurt. What part in your life gets triggered by that? Uh, and this is, if you, ever, if you want to uh, start dwelling into your unconscious, use this clearing statement. Everything I held that's secret about this, can these secrets be revealed? Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, all nine shorts, boys, and beyonds. So it kind of reads on the left side. So how much anger is there? How much sadness is there that uh, 
that that's held back, like sad that you're suffering. Sad that other people are suffering. Ah, okay. So what defensive systems are with this? Of fear, anger, uh, what's the third one? Shame shows up. So all of those triangulations of fear, anger, and shame and that, that you're really sad that so many people are in pain, you're suffering, people are, are potentially being degraded at this point, and we really don't know all the answers. We're really in this place of unknown. All of those defensive systems of anger, fear, and shame, and all of the decisions, judgments, compilations, and conclusions holding that in place, Will you please revoke, recant, rescind, reclaim, renounce, denounce, destroy, and quit that totally and utterly? Right, wrong, good, bad, pop, pot, all nine shorts, boys, and beyonds. So the interesting thing about shame is it's a belief that we do not have the capabilities to do something or be something. Uh, and so how much shame is there that we're powerless in this situation? And this is a lie, but it's kind of what we believe that we don't have the answers and we don't have it in ourselves as an individual. So therefore we feel shame and it's a state of disempowerment. So how much is there a um, reaction to that, that I'm going to react in fear. I'm going to react in anger. There's more energy to anger. In other words, there's kind of a duality there. You have shame on one side that contracts, and you have anger that pushes out and, and kind of gets the job done, or it goes to a protest and yells and screams, or takes a gun with them to the Georgia State Capitol or South Carolina State Capitol, whatever that is for you. Uh, I don't think there's anybody in this audience that went there. But uh, nobody has beards, for starters. That's a joke, by the way. Uh, so all of that duality between that, and we call it a double binding, double binding system, two opposing energies going to opposite directions. Uh, will you pock and pod the ends, pock and pod the middle ground, and destroy and uncreate that duality of shame and anger totally and utterly. Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. So how much is this feeling that you can't do anything about this immovable? You know, the thing is, is what people Sorry, <laughs> I got to do a clarion on that one. It's like, God bless. Uh, this shame is immovable. That we are uh, disempowered in this immovable state. That's kind of it. Uh, and, and for me, it's really weird because I feel all this energy at the top of my head, almost like there's something pushing down there. Uh, and I don't exactly understand what, that's trying to tell my body. Uh, oh, how much does this feel like you can't access a higher source? So everything that you bought that you're totally alone with this, you don't have a higher power to assist you, to help you uh, with this, and that you are totally alone and this is very shaming. And it almost feels like there's a wrongness in it that you're doing something wrong. And that's just an, uh, an innate quality of what shame is. You always feel like it's your wrongness and, 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 and you gotta hide it. You can't just like bring it out to the, to the light and let it be transformed, which is a lie. So everything that, that came up, 
all the ways, means, methods, modalities, form, structure, significances, protocols, factors, and vocal points, and positive ions, free radicals that hold that in place. Will you please destroy and uncreate that totally and utterly? Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, all nine shorts, boys, and beyonds. Now, everybody has a real um, different interpretation of God. Um, and I would like to pose, I'm, I'm, I'm certainly not going to tell you what's right concept of God, because I don't exactly know, but I know what this concept of higher power is for me in this situation. And that is, I can bring an energy that is a higher vibration either outside of me, into me, or connect to a source within me. You know, and there's another concept about God <laughs> is that God is amongst us. So it's, it's, you know, this is a Catholic concept that I, well, I learned it with my Catholic friends. God is beyond us, within us, and amongst us. It's just ironic that we're doing social distant, distancing. So we're not really connecting as a human race and doing all of this trading off. All of this trading off. Okay. Somebody needs to mute. <laughs> Or that I really struck in there. <laughs> but, uh, okay, so everything that you cannot allow a higher power to be within you, how many beliefs have you created that you're totally alone in this fear, in this shame, and in this anger, also known as a defensive system? That's source is in their liver. And this kind of like, this is my right side. It's kind of like this pushes out energetically. When I see people with strong defensive systems, they have all of this energy just pushing out on the right side. And they're just like these people that go, I just got to get it done. We're going to take this by charge. I'm a can do person, <laughs> but I'm not enjoying it. It's kind of like that. Those are the kind of characteristics of, <laughs> Why it's like to have that type of fear and, and, and defensive system. So all the force and energy you're using to do that and to be that, will you please revoke, recant, resend, reclaim, renounce, denounce, destroy, and uncreate that totally and utterly. Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, all nine shorts, boys, and beyonds. So there's all kinds of qualities with this defensive system and different dynamics. And, and you have to think of them like, like I said earlier, it's a cycle. And you know, like, like the shame is the low space. The fear might be worry. It might be contemplating it way too much. And, 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 and it all, uh, of course it stimulates your adrenal glands and you become addicted to that type of uh, mechanistic thinking. And then you're going to do something about it. So you use it anger and anger is not always aggressive. It could be, I mean, I wrote a whole entire book out of anger because I wanted to show my spiritual teacher that uh, I could do something that would impress him or intimidate him. This is really, you know, crazy. Uh, but that's how powerful anger can be. It can stay with us for a long time. So everything that you're approaching this virus and this, um, these fears, you know, and I made a list on my handout of all of these fears of uh, virus, economy, um, the unknown, and, and then now I can't even think of them. Uh, but there's all of these aspects that are all just, you know, pinging away at everybody, loss of freedom. Um, so everything that we're using anger, or that, 
that I'm going to figure out a way. I'm going to figure out a way to do this. Oh, so all the force and energy you're using to do that, be that, have that, create it, and uh, re-stimulate it. Will you please destroy and create all of that totally and utterly? Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, all nine shorts, boobies, and beyonds. And so how much does this really go into, I can't receive this fear. I can't receive this consciousness. In other words, I'm going to keep pushing it away. Oh, no, I don't want to hear that story. Uh, that's wrong and bad. He, you know, he's... He's, he's really disgusted. And as soon as you put up a judgment like that, the wall comes up and you can't really see that person like that. As opposed to a way to do this, and I do this with all different kinds of political leaders. I wonder what my part is in this time in history. I wonder how I am creating this in my life. Now, you know, this is a really interesting perplexity because, you know, how did I create Bill Gates? Uh, you know, what always comes up for me is the shame that I hold that creates apathy. That I can't do anything about Bill Gates. I can't do anything about people who are trying to manipulate the world in such fashion as he seems to apparently be doing. And that's a lie. That I can't do anything about it. Um, just my acknowledgement that I am part of the solution and I can begin to spiral up in my consciousness changes the world to where Bill Gates doesn't vibrate so strongly. In other words, all of what he stands for, all of what he stands for in consciousness. In other words, our consciousness right now needed certain people like Bill Gates, Donald Trump, Joe Biden, Bernie Sanders are all, you know, parts in the plan. You know, and some people see one as a good guy, one see other people see the other as a bad guy. But um, they're all part of that play. And uh, how much do you believe they have the answer for you? Might not be a great answer. <laughs> it might be something you're really scared of, or they're the best person in the world. By the way, that's a judgment, and that is polarity. Um, so, everything that you've uh, put all your eggs in the basket, so to speak, on one person, one belief that it's going to have the answer, and it's going to create safety and security for you, that someday we're going to find that golden egg and find our safety and security. And so, so basically you're banking, banking on a source outside of you in this perspective. Uh, how many defensive systems are hardwired in that belief system? Uh, fear? Does anger read? No. Does shame read? Yep. Does Sadness read, nope. Does love read? So those are the five basic, basic emotions. And I've said them all. I think I said them all in that thing. And it's really good. But these are the most five basic emotions. Shame, sadness, fear. Those are the three most basics. And then the fourth is probably anger. That's not probably, it is. And then you have a fifth, which is, arousal or love. In other words, the expansion, something that feels good, 
And so a lot of people use an expansion as a defensive system. In other words, they will like, you know, say, I'm going to love everybody and I'm going to change everything in the world. And at the same time, they're very fearful and they're really trying harder, hard to separate from the fear. And in this case, that's what's going on. Not exactly like that, but it's like, I'm going to expand out. There's a utopia out there that Bill Gates or Bernie Sanders or Donald Trump or Joe Biden is going to hand over to me. <laughs> We're going to be safe and secure. America's going to be great again. Uh, whatever. Um, so all the defensive systems that have that you have bought in. And just think about your thoughts that you've done that as, as we're doing this clearing. Because if you can identify your thoughts that go, yeah, that's how I do it. Yep, that's my story. You're gonna clear it when we do this clearing statement. Uh, so all the decisions, judgments, compilations, and conclusions with this of um, shame, fear, and love, We, in all the decisions, judgments, compilations, and conclusions you've made to create that triangul uh, triangulation and defensive system, will you please revoke, recant, rescind, reclaim, renounce, denounce, destroy, and uncreate that totally and utterly. Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, all nine, choice, boys, and beyonds. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring up this defensive system in a question. And I just want you to feel your gut or feel your liver. Or, or just feel your body in general. How much in the last couple of days have you read stories, seen the news, heard stories from other people, and you became in resistance to it because it scared you and your fears popped up? your shame popped up and because it was like, I don't want to hear this. I'm tired of hearing this. And you, you just go into a reaction and your wall comes up. I'm tired of hearing the news. I'm tired of hearing this shit. It scares me. Uh, that kind of stuff. So on a scale of one to 10, how are you affected? And I'm just going to go up the scale with 10 being really affected. And I just want you to pay attention to your, um, to your body and see which one reads. So is it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So I'm just connecting to the co collective consciousness of the group and six, seven, eight kind of red is kind of there. Um, hmm. So all the uh, shame, fear and love that really got triggered in that And all the shiku implants will be strips. Quite a particular slide, particulars holding all of those energies in place. Will you please destroy and uncreate them all totally and utterly? Right, wrong, good, bad, hot, pod, all nine, shorts, boys, and beyond. And how much do you feel like you want to do the right thing? and send out more love, peace, goodwill, uh, smile with your mask on. Uh, on. That's on one end, but on the other end, there's a feeling that I'm really scared. All the double binds and double binding systems holding those two polarities in place. Will you please pocket and pot the ends, pocket and pot the middle ground, destroy and upgrade that totally. Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, on nine shorts, boys, be honest. Now, 
another one shows up is how much do we feel like we're not moving fast enough? That would be shame, by the way. And it would be like control <laughs> on the other end, which would be fear. It's just like, I'm not moving fast enough. I'm, do I'm doing something. I'm not doing enough. Ah. So all the double binds and double binding systems, holding that in place. Will you pocket pie the ends, pocket pie the middle ground, destroy and uncreate that totally and utterly. Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pod, all nine shorts, boys and beyonds. Whew. Okay, so would you claim on and acknowledge that you are moving forward? You are expanding and growing with this. You know, as I said earlier in the first of this, the consciousness of the, of, of, of the world, and when I say the world, that doesn't mean the earth. That means the earth and the people and the animals and everything. It's the whole collective thing. That's, that's in Bart Sharp's vocabulary. Uh, the world is expanding and growing all through this point. And one of the things that has allowed this to happen is so many people have stopped and slowed down. They're sitting at home, they're doing less, they're relaxing, they're watching Netflix more or whatever, but they're just kind of tuning it all down. And, and that's an important part of consciousness is the ability to relax. And then there are other people that are like, well, I'm pushing the envelope. I'm moving it forward. We all have roles in this. And between the two, something's happening. And what seems to be, and I've been thinking about this, well, what is it that keeps people slowing down and we haven't been progressing like this you know, in the last few years. And it seems like, you know, when, when 2012 came onto the scene, uh, you know, I, I, we kept thinking, well, wow, we're going to jump into this big pool of consciousness and everything's going to go boom and expand and grow. It's going to be great. But it really didn't seem to happen, in my opinion. It seemed like we're doing business as usual. We were moving along and progressing and, you know, we didn't have all of these big consciousness breakthroughs, but right now it just seems like it's all happening. Even, even some of the news stories of big progressions happening either in the legal systems or inventions or even governments are all opening up. And why? Because the consciousness is changing. It's that silent underbelly that we all have a part of. And why I bring that up is you are, you are all making a difference just by being you and just by you spiraling upward in your own personal journey. That's what makes the difference. It's a collective consciousness of I am growing. So one of the things I really found infective with fear is discovering what I'm really afraid of, like the worst case scenarios. And if I could really see what that worst case scenario is, and it's almost like, you know, I go through a list of things, what I'm really afraid of. Um, for example, uh, I'll use this one. I don't like to get political, but I like this example so much. I will be political. When Trump was elected in office, I became really scared. And, you know, it, I was locked up for a couple of days and I'm going, <laughs> I don't want to do this for four years. So I had to go into this point of view of like, well, what am I really afraid of? What's the worst thing that I'm really afraid of? And, and, and this is a very personal interpretation. And what you really have to realize about fears 
is they don't always make sense. They can be very irrational and illogical. And, and, and when you ask your body, well, what am I really afraid of? And something shows up that doesn't make sense, respect it. Because that may be your own, your own personal story that you're really afraid of. What you do is when you say it and you ask, well, what's the energy of that? And you feel something in your gut feel really uncomfortable. You know, it has validity. And that's really learning your own body and your own body's messages. It's really uber important. So I had to ask the question, you know, well, what am I really afraid of with this new president? And, um, what showed up for me was he's going to destroy the planet. Now this has nothing to do with rational and logic, not to do with truth. I'm not seeing into the future. This is my own fear. And so I had to rationalize it like, well, okay. Um, if the planet was destroyed, um, spirits would still live on. And something in that gave me assurance. And then I could say this bold statement that took down my defensive systems. In other words, when I went into fear about all of this, I made all of these judgments, just the fear and that reaction to them and I just did it. It wasn't even in my thought process. It's like, oh my God, this happened. You know, it's more like that. Well, those are judgments. And the defensive walls showed up. My defensive system showed up. And all of a sudden, I was in panic. So, I told you the, the kind of the first steps of here is claim, your, claim what the worst fear is. See it for exactly what it is. Not being afraid of it. You're just getting information. And then you do this. As you say, I claim on and acknowledge I can receive this fear. I can have it. You know, the thing about when you go, oh my God, this is terrible. What are you doing? You're trying to push the fear outside of you. It's like, I don't want this stuff. I don't want to hear that story. I want to turn this off. These are all defensive systems. These are all reactions and judgments. And what you, sh what, if you want to prevent that, you ask, what is this fear about? A question. And when you figure out what it is, you ask to receive that fear in your life. Doesn't mean I got to go out and do it, or I have to change my political alignments, anything. It just means that I'm not going to be pushing up against it. And I'm not using all of this energy to be afraid of it. It's, it's almost like if I was afraid of the coronavirus, every store I'd be going into, I'd be going, oh my God, I could die today. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, and then people were thinking that, you know, I'm taking my own life in my own hands. Uh, and there's truth to that, you could die. But you don't have to die in fear. And as soon as you start to realize that, that that's what you're afraid of. And, and a lot of people have, have, have had this, and my suspicion is, is it's not the virus they're afraid of. It's all of these stories they have, they have lived by that dying is a horrible thing. Dying by a disease is a horrible thing. Dying by war is a horrible thing. Dying alone is a horrible thing. So what's your story? <laughs> what is your story about what are you afraid of in dying? What are you afraid of in suffering while you die? Is it alone? And I'm just going to go down and maybe you know your story already and I'm going to bore you, but I'm just going to go in and see if I can trigger some people. 
because uh, if I say something and it really resonates with you, you feel a charge of energy, that's your story. So are you afraid that you're going to die alone? Are you afraid that you're going to have immense suffering? Are you afraid that you're going to die with no one loving you? Are you going to, are you afraid that you're going to die? And you've not accomplished everything you want to accomplish. In other words, you ran out of time, which is the greatest fear of all. The fear that we're running, we're not going to have enough time. Ah, so I can't think of any other fears. So whatever that fear is, dissolving and not everything that you've made secret, hidden, invisible, covert, and seen, unsaid, undisclosed, unacknowledged about that, will you allow those secrets to be revealed? Right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, all nine shorts, boys, and beyonds. Now receive this fear. Receive what it feels like in your body to be in that place that you're so afraid of. Feel it in your body. And um, would you be willing to claim on and acknowledge that you can receive this fear? Everything that that is, right, wrong, good, bad, pot, pot, all nine shorts, boys, and beyonds. How does that feel in your body? On this end, everything relaxed. Everything feels kind of hunky-dory right now. Um, so that feels pretty good. Um, now, one of the people that's here today, uh, Patrick, uh, Cariel. I worked with him yesterday. We, we've, we've had a relationship for a long time, like 15 years? 15 so years, like, yeah. 15 years. Uh, so we won't tell how old we are. Uh, <laughs> I'm the older one of the two. Um, but we worked on something really phenomenal with, with Patrick. Um, and that we started pulling in different consciousnesses and collective unconsciousnesses of the world, but also good things like, you know, asking to maybe connect to the consciousness of people that are amazing creators that can, you know, turn uh, sawdust into gold dust, you know, those type of people. Uh, but also we, we, you know, we wanted a balance of fears and pain and suffering and, and, and to start using this as a tool. So, you know, the big thing, uh, this is lesson number one or one of the basic lessons of energy. There's no such thing as good or bad energy. It's just energy. When we make it bad and when we become defensive towards it, we block off a part of our lives. We block off a part of our consciousness. And, and so, um, you know, we're going to pull in some fear energy. <laughs> and uh, don't think of it as a bad energy that's going to give you the virus or, or make you feel bad. Uh, is just the sensation. But, but what you do when you pull in a negative energy is you start, it's kind of like a flush. You flush out your own unconsciousness that's been in fear of something. So um, we're going to do just a short meditation with this. And also we're going to reprogram it in the end. Uh, we're going to connect to a very powerful energy called the universal field of love, uh, which is kind of the super glue that holds the world together, basically. Holds all life together beyond the world, but all throughout the universe. It's, it's a God energy, so to speak. I like to call it the universal field of love. So 
off we go. Uh, I want you to pay attention to your heart and your thymus. And your thymus is right above your heart. It's a gland. And the thymus basically communicates information that the heart already knows. In other words, the heart is picking up tons and tons and tons of information all the time. It is your gateway to the collective unconsciousness of not only this world, but other dimensions and realities. And the best way that you can interpret and understand this energy is by activating your thymus, because the thymus interprets all of this massive amounts of energy. The heart is moving through it. Just think of this heart as like a, it's like your walking internet. It just has tons of information going through it all the time. And it's always changing. And you can kind of go out and specifically attach to certain types of information. Dial it up, so to speak. So, um, I'm just thinking about, well, we worked on fear of degradation today. So that's what we're going to work on. So what is your fear of being degraded? In other words, somebody hurting you. And they purposely hurting you. And in some weird way, want you to feel pain. They don't care about you. They just want you. They just want to dominate you. They just want to control you. They do not care if you're suffering. And in fact, they may want you to suffer. So what is that energy inside of you right now? Feel what that is. And, and you may have certain people in your life that, have, that you're dealing with, you know, maybe like a dominating mother or, uh, or sister or something that just put that on you. And you can think about your own personal story about what that was. And feel what that energy is. And it should feel a bit uncomfortable. It shouldn't be pleasant. And that's okay. Because to be more conscious, you have to receive the good, the bad, and the ugly. So now we ask to connect to the people in our community and in our town that had these same energies, that are in a big fears of, of being degraded. And somebody's gonna use them and hurt them. It could be abused people, could be people afraid that they're gonna die from this virus, or they've read a lot of conspiracy theories and they're really afraid right now that something from left field is going to come in and wipe them out. Can you connect with that collective consciousness and allow it to come into your backside of your heart and then just go out through your front side and begin to see it circulate. In other words, it's starting to, it will go out your front side and come around and come back in because that's how the heart works. It's, it's like a torus. It's always circulating this energy. And it's circulating this way, circulating this way, circulating this way. It's doing a 360 degree circle. And we just ask it to tune into fear of being degraded. And as these fears come in, they're going to resonate with your own fears and just let them circulate and observe what they are with curiosity. It's kind of like a kid who gets, you know, he's, he's like five years old and he's never been really injured and he falls down really hard and he cuts his hand like a big deep gash that probably needs stitches, you know, and somebody can either look at it and go, wow, that's quite a cut. I guess we need to take you to the nurse. Or they can say, oh my God, it's horrible. You know, 
So we're the first one and like, we're saying, God, let's feel what this pain is like. You know, what kind of suffering are people doing around me? And allow it to be, allow it to be coming into your body and just being with your own fears. It's almost like being afraid of the water and somebody putting a life jacket on you and throwing you in the deep end of the pool and just letting you feel that fear and you stay in there until you calm down. This actually happened to me. Big fear of water when I was a kid. Long story. So we allow that to happen, to keep circulating. And think of those stories that you've been told that, oh, this is the worst that ever happened. I was degraded by this man. It was horrible. And then they tell you the story and you're sitting there going, oh yeah, girl, I know what you mean. You know, uh, whatever that is, you know, all of those types of stories. Can you allow the energy of them to just be with you? Hmm. And allow your calm to prevail. For me, this is pretty energizing. I'm, 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 I'm squirming here on my, in my uh, uh, couch. Uh, it's not a bad thing. It's just like it's a, a lot of energy moving through. Because when we think about fear, it's a heightened energy. It's requiring us to have more energy to take and, 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 and take ourselves to safety. But in this society, we have become addicted to that type of energy. We're moving way too fast, doing way too many things, and we need energy to keep up with everybody else. Therefore, we use fear and anger to move ourselves along. And we do it and we convert it into other forms. But the base core energy of that stuff is anger and fear. So just feel this energy. And now we're going to shift a little bit and we're going to ask the universal field of love. We ask the universal field of love an energy that is of the earth, of the universe, that is a higher vibration, that opens a pathway to higher vibrations. We ask the infinite intensity of consciousness of the universal field of love to activate in all of us a billion times 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 a billion right wrong good bad pop pot on nature which means and beyond so as you feel this universal field of love feel it in your heart in your body and what empowers universal field of love a lot is sharing it, being connected to uh, objects, people, nature, anything. So would you allow, would you just claim to share the universal field of love that's within you with everybody in this group? Send it across the internet. There's no time and space on the internet is what I've learned. And allow it to happen. And as you send it out, be aware how your whole body changes. You're connected to something bigger. And that's the whole beauty of what this class today is about, is to be aware of your fears just like we did earlier in this little meditation, and then begin spiraling to a higher vibration with another energy. We're not trying to avoid the fear. We're just basically telling the fear that it can grow to something else. So we allow both energies to be together, let them resonate together, and uh, 
then a higher consciousness comes in us. And that's our best way to interact with fear really is to really start claiming that you have the power in you to know what to do whenever challenges show up in your life. And you do not have to react from your past stuffs when things were out of control. It's kind of like, oh my God, what if I go back to the way I reacted when my mom would whip me? That was horrible. I don't want that again. What if I can't, you know, what if I fall back into that again? It's just like, well, can you just trust that you're going to know how to do it differently? And tell your body that. So everything that we have interacted with, with fears and various forms of the virus and fears of poverty and fears of um, being manipulated and degraded, can we claim on and acknowledge that we're going to know what to do when the time comes? That we're not going to lose our bearings. We're going to stay in a place of growth and in consciousness. And we're going to move. We're going to progress and grow. And what a great opportunity this time in life has given us to change. Seize the day. So, let's come out of the meditation. And, uh, you know, I, I, I did this last night. It's like, this kind of was discovered between Patrick and I. And we both agreed that, well, this is really neat. Uh, and so this is kind of a new meditation technique. I just find that doing various forms of meditation um, is a good thing. You know, I'm not a proponent of, and maybe it's right for some people, but to do the same meditation for years. And maybe that works for some people, but for me, I'm always changing and learning new tools because meditations teach you different aspects of consciousness and they, they teach you different tools. So if you choose to play with this one, uh, you know, just open it up and have a balance, have a balance of things you want to create that are more positive and then things that you are afraid of or shaming or, or you want to connect to the collective consciousness of the, of the world of the negative things. And what you're basically telling your body is that you can be as big as the world, that your consciousness is that big and you wish to function from that huge of space. And what does that give you in your life? More power. Because your energetic space is being trained to be bigger. Actually, it's already big, huge. Your mind has not figured that out and your mind doesn't know how to access this huge space that's already happening in your body. So it's this interaction of learning how to be aware of your huge space and these exercises just facilitate it. And that's kind of how it works. So, um, any questions? Any responses? Any bad jokes? Um, so um, I want to thank everybody for coming and uh, I'll be contemplating what's next with classes. If you have any ideas, send me a note. And, uh, you know, I, I just thank everybody for coming today. Many blessings. and. This recording will be out in a few days. Thanks, Barth. Bye, everybody. Any, any good blessings. Thank you for coming.
Thank Thanks, you. Bart. It, was it was great awesome. as always. I really appreciate Thanks. it. Thanks. Felt wonderful. Turn off the recording.